Hello everyone, good evening. Today we are going to have a DTRS session, daily tech rapid series session. And in, in today's uh, DTRS session, we are going to discuss the 10 more, uh, most important topics from uh, the newspapers. And these topics will be discussed through, uh, through MCQs. So if you attend these sessions regularly, you will be able to solve questions in the prelims exam easily. Because the questions that we are framing under DTRS sessions, they are highly similar to the UPSC prelims previous year questions. So let us start the discussion for the day. So the discussion that we are going to start is, let's say first of all, we are going to understand about a quotation, a quote. So uh, this quote has been given by Henry Kissinger, okay, Henry Kissinger. He says the absence of alternatives clears the mind marvelously. So it truly fits your preparation strategy. For example, if you are preparing for the UPSC civil services examination and if you are truly dedicated for your preparation, right, if you are truly dedicated to, towards your preparation. So in that case, your mind will be clear and you will be able to put your best efforts for this exam. And this is what, let's say, makes the difference between successful candidates and unsuccessful candidates. So basically, it says that the absence of alternatives clears the minds, uh, minds marvelously. So good evening, Vijaylal. Thank you so much for joining. And when we talk about Henry Kissinger, who was he? Basically, Henry Kissinger is considered to be one of the, let's say, greatest diplomats of all time. And he has worked as national security advisor, right, under uh, President's, uh, President Nixon in, in the United States of America. And Henry Kissinger has worked in multiple domains, right? He was a diplomat. He, let's say, worked on the real politic. He is considered to be one of the proponents of real politic. And he served as the national security advisor to USA. He has played role, right, in the Vietnam War. He has played role uh, for to, let's say, uh, to bring ceasefire in the Yom Kippur War that has happened in 1973. In Yom Kippur War, basically, it was a war between Israel and some uh, some Arab countries. So there, like Henry Kissinger played a very important role. And apart from this. What Henry Kissinger has done, he has, let's say, he is considered to be a person who has brought this particular thing, which is known as detente. What do we mean by detente? It simply means, like, you know, after World War, the World War One, World War Two, basically after World War Two, right, the global politics or, let's say, geopolitics was divided between two major powers. On one side, there were... Uh, uh, there was the USA, United States of America. On the other side, there was USSR, which is also known as Soviet Union, right? So these two parts, these two countries were playing very key role in the global politics. So they were under, that's a Cold War situation. So detente through detente, he tried to pacify the Cold War between USA and USSR, okay? Detente is one of the foreign policy initiatives of Henry. Not only this, he has also normalized ties of USA with China, okay? So he is considered to be one of the, uh, like, let's say, proponent of real politic. And why we are discussing about Henry Kissinger? Because he recently passed away, right? I think this year he passed away. So that's why, let's say, we are talking about his thought process through a quote, right? So it the quote is, let's say, very much important for you also because like if you don't have an alternative you are going to put your best effort right towards whatever you want to achieve right so there are many books on strategies that talk about the death ground it simply means if you don't have an alternative so you're going to give your best and that makes you makes you victorious right so this is the thing so with this let us quickly see the list of topics on which we are going to discuss the mcqs today so the first topic will be based on India's research station in Antarctica. So we are going to discuss about that. Then we have summer air, defi air defense missile system. Then we are going to discuss about orangutans. We are going to discuss about Sahitya Academy Awards. We are going to discuss about Leif Erikson Lunar Prize. Okay, we are going to discuss about it. Then we are going to discuss about recent, uh, like recent development for a recent uh, development policy operation. Then we are going to discuss about a disease which is known as late blight disease. 
देन वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट प्रधानमंत्री भारतीय जन औषधि परियोजना राइट देन देर इज नॉर्दर्न विंटर सोलिस्टिस सो दिस इज अ जोग्राफिकल फिनोमिना वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट इट ओके इट्स ऑल्सो टॉट अंडर साइंस एंड टेक्नोलॉजी बट वी आर गोइंग टू अंडरस्टैंड अबाउट इट वट डू वी मीन बाई विंटर सोलिस्टिस समर सोलिस्टिस एंड वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द नॉर्दर्न विंटर सोलिस्टिस देन वी हैव अ टॉपिक विच इज नोन एज ऑपरेशन प्रॉस्पेरिटी गार्जियन ओके सो वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस all of it one by one <clears throat> so the first topic that we are going to discuss it says consider the following statements about india's research station in antarctica right so as we know this is the earth right this is the north pole of the earth this is the south pole of the earth right through earth various important lines pass these are known as latitudes 0 degree which is known as latitude 23 and half degree this is known as the tropic of cancer 23 and half degree tropic of capricorn okay 23 and half degree north and south and then over here we have arctic and we have antarctica okay so the thing is like in antarctica what india has india has set up research stations we have set up research stations and these research through these research station we want to do research related to climate change right we want to do research related to climate change and other geophysical phenomena right in the antarctic region so related to that they have given four statements okay four statements they have given we are going to try to solve this question it says maitri was the first station built by india in antarctica for research purposes so maitri is one of the research station but it it was not the first research station in Anta uh, antarctica the first research station is known as dakshin gangotri okay it, it is known as what dakshin gangotri okay dakshin gangotri like that then dakshin gangotri and bharti are the two indian research stations currently operational in the continent okay so now they are saying dakshin gangotri and bharti so dakshin gangotri was a very old right it was the first research station however it is not currently operational right which are operational maitri is operational and right one of the thing is is maitri is operational and apart from this we have another uh, like program which is operational but like dakshin gangotri is not op operational so that's why it makes this wrong right then the third statement it says the union government has targeted to set up a new research station in antarctica to be named as himadri 2 okay new research station to be named as himadri 2 this is also wrong okay so the thing is we are not naming it as himadri 2 we are naming it as maitri 2 okay we are naming it as maitri 2 so third statement is also wrong then yes so dakshin gangotri is not operational fourth state fourth statement national center for polar and ocean research is the implementing agency for these stations this is right okay so research stations that are being set up in antarctica right so they are set up by this particular organization which is known as national center for polar and ocean research so only one of the statement is correct which is statement 4 so that makes option a to be the right answer okay option is is right answer over here we have a similar question it is from upsc previous year question so it says in the context of modern scientific research consider the following statements about ice cube okay so ice cube basically here ice cube it is the world's largest neutrino detector encompassing cubic kilometer of ice okay neutrinos so neutrinos come in three flavors we have tau neutrino muon neutrino and we have let's say like you know uh, electron neutrino tau neutrino muon neutrino like that so we have different three types of flavors of neutrino and this is the world's largest neutrino detector it is powerful it is a powerful telescope to search for dark matter and here it says it is buried deep in the ice okay so let's say all the three statements are correct and correct answer is option d in this case option d is the right answer uh, for uh, for previous year question so here why we have taken this uh, like topic for a question because recently in the press information bureau an article came it says operationalization of maitri 
Mitri 2 is the recent, let's say like, you know, recent research station that we are going to set up in Antarctica, okay? So we are thinking of operationalizing it, let's say like, you know, within 18 months, like very soon we are, we want to operationalize it, right? This is the thing. So by 2029, we want to completely operationalize different parts of this particular mission. So you can go through the explanation also in your free time. Then we have another question. We are going to discuss about this question. It says, consider the following statements about summer air defense missile system. What summer air defense missile system? Now we need to understand about what are different types of missiles. One type of missile is known as cruise missiles. Other is known as ballistic missile. Okay. So generally missiles are categorized into two different types, ballistic missile, cruise missiles. Ballistic missiles like, you know, after launch, you don't have much control on the missile. So wherever you have targeted, it is directly going to go and it's, it's going to explode. But in case of cruise missiles, cruise missiles follow the path, right, that you have set. You can, let's say, guide its path during the flight also, okay. So the thing is, when we talk about missiles, missiles generally follow a trajectile path, okay. They generally follow a trajectile path. So the distance up to which the missile goes, it is known as range of the missile, okay. So if the missile is guided through the path, it is known as uh, this cruise missile. Otherwise, it is known as ballistic missile. On the basis of how long it is going to go, we categorize these missiles as short range ballistic missile, medium range ballistic missile, let's say like, you know, long range ballistic missiles. And similarly, for cruise missiles also, we do the same, okay. So here this question is about a kind of new missile, which is known as summer air defense missile system. So now let us understand these statements. They have given three statements. And wo what we need to do, we need to identify which of these statements are correct. We need to identify which of these statements are correct. It says it has been developed by defense research and development organization. This statement is wrong because this missile has been developed by Indian Air Force, okay? It is developed by Indian Air Force. Indian Air Force has developed this missile. So that's why this is wrong. Second, it is a short range quick re reaction surface to air missile, okay? Then third statement, what it says, third statement, it says that it provides Indian Air Force with the much needed capability to defend, uh, defend against low flying aerial threats, okay, low flying aerial threats. So in this case, in this question, actually, uh, the second and third statements are right. It is a short range quick reaction surface to air missile. So the thing is a missile that can be launched from the surface and, and the target is target is at air means like what we want to do. We want to destroy a helicopter. We want to destroy a kind of, let's say flying object. So for that, we use this kind of missiles, which are launched from the ground, which are launched from the ground and the target is this. So it is known as uh, surface to air, air missile. Okay. So second and third statement are right. It means option B will be the right answer. Similarly, if we see the UPSC counterpart, UPSC has also asked a question similarly in 2007. It says consider the following statements in November 2006. Uh, DRDO successfully conduct, conducted the interception test using Prithvi missile. This was right. And then Prithvi 2 is a surface to surface missile and can be deployed to guard the metros against air strike. Both these statements are right. Okay. So that time in 2017, this Prithvi missile was in new. So that's why they have asked about it. Right. And this time the summer missile is in new. So that's why they can ask question related to it. So what, what is the full form of summer? Summer means surface to air missile for assured retaliation. Okay. What is the full form of summer? So we are going to understand in this case, summer, summer missile. It says, it means surface to air, surface to air missile for Assured retaliation, okay, surface to air missile for assured retaliation that is known as summer, okay. So, this is the summer missile. 
then we have another uh, let's say like you know with this let us now quickly move to another topic and before that let us see why we have included a question on this topic indian air force successfully test fire summer air defense missile system at exercise this astra shakti astra shakti okay name of the exercise is exercise astra shakti and indian air force has developed it and they are they have tested also now we have another question we are quickly going to discuss this question it says consider the following statements about orangutans so what are orangutans many of you may not be able to understand what are orangutans so basically orangutans can be considered to be a species of ape okay they are a species of ape large ape ape means one of the species of ape is chimpanzee to which let's say human beings are the closest relative but if we talk about orangutans they are one of the distant relative of human beings means like human beings have evolved from different types of ape species right so chimpanzee then if we go long back orangutans were one of the one of them okay so when i talk about orangutans you can simply let's say like recognize a kind of let's say chimpanzee type of thing right so it's it's like that so we will see if if a picture is given now it is found only in the forest of sumatra and borneo they have given three statements and we need to identify how many of the above statements are right okay so now what they are saying that it is found only right it is found only in the forest of sumatra and borneo this is right this statement is right borneo and sumatran orangutans are same in appearance and behavior this is wrong it is an endangered species under iucn status okay so the thing is only first statement is right it is found in, only in this uh, like you know forest of sumatra and borneo you might have seen islands right these are island nations so this is the thing there these type of the orangutans that we find in borneo and in sumatra they look different from one another there are color variation there are variation in their body so visible variation is there so they are not similar okay they are not same or they are not similar also and it is not endangered so iucn list it as critically endangered okay iucn lists orangutan as critically endangered species okay critically endangered this is important so how many of the above statements are right only one and that is first one now we have our upsc previous year question prelims 2023 which one of the following makes makes a tool with a stick to scrap insects from a hole in a tree or a long so basically here what they have given they have let's say talked about orangutan their behavior right so they make stick as their weapon to scrap insects from a hole means like you know they take out hole from the insects like that so this is the let's say face of orangutan but like you know the entire body should have been given right so this is sumatra and this is java okay this is sumatra this is java this is kalimantan and this is indonesian borneo okay so in borneo and in sumatra we find different types of varieties of orangutan now we have another topic another question we are going to discuss about this question now it says with reference to the sahitya academy consider the following statements okay it is related to sahitya academy they have given three statements it supports literary work in 24 languages this statement is right apart from sahitya academy awards the academy confers yuva puraskar to young writers who are below the age of 20 years this is not 20 years this is in fact 35 years those youngsters those people who are below the age of 35 years they are considered to be young writers and they are given yuva puraskar by the sahitya academy okay so second statement is wrong because of the age thing third statement the general council of the academy is presided by the minister in charge of the ministry of culture this is wrong so it is not presided over by the minister in charge it is presided over by the president not the president of india but the president of the sahitya academy and the president of the sahitya academy is generally a person right who is considered to be a distinguished uh, let's say like you know 
distinguished author or he has created a mark in literacy and all. So he is that the general council is headed by that person. He is from academics itself. So he is not the minister in charge. So the thing is only first statement is correct. They are asking how many of the above statements are correct? Only one first. Now we have another, uh, this is previous year question. It says consider the following statements. The National School of Drama, NSD was set up by Sangeet Natak Academy. This is right. The highest honor conferred by the Sahitya Academy on a writer is by electing him, its fellow. This is also right. Okay. So the thing is, in this question, UPSC previous year question, they have asked question from two different topics, two different things. One is National School of Drama, Sangeet Natak Academy, that's a different thing. And here Sahitya Academy means here, their dramatics and here, let's say like, you know, literacy. These are two different things, literary works. So both these statements are correct and correct answer is option C. All right. So with this, let us now quickly move to another topic. And now let us understand about this language related thing. It is not only number that we are talking about. This statement was right. Right? It is not only the number. Over here, let us say in Indian constitution, we have 8th schedule of the constitution. In the 8th schedule, 22 languages are mentioned. All those 20, in all those 22 languages, the Sahitya Academy supports literary works. Apart from this, it also supports literary works in English and in Rajasthani. Okay? 22 languages from the 8th schedule of the constitution of India and English and Rajasthani, okay, that makes 24 because Rajasthani is not a separate language, right, under the 8th schedule of the constitution. So this is the thing. So Sahitya Academy has recently announced the awards for 2023. So that's why we have taken this question. Now we have another question, another topic. So we are going to look into this question. It says with reference to Leif Erikson Lunar Prize, okay. Leif Erikson Lunar Prize consider the following statements. It's a kind of prize, it's a kind of award, right? So we are going to discuss this question from the perspective of this award. It says ISRO has won the 2023 Leif Erikson Lunar Prize for its successful Chandrayaan 3 mission. This statement is right, okay? This statement is right. ISRO has earlier won this award for Chandrayaan 1 mission. This is wrong. ISRO has won this award for the first time, okay? For Chandrayaan 3 mission only. Because we have launched Chandrayaan 3 in the south pole of the moon, right? We have sent, let's say like, you know, the lander module, we have sent the rover module and the rover module started roving or it started moving on the surface of the moon. It has shared, let's say gathered information from there. It has shared those information with this rope. So that mission was for one lunar day or 14 earth days. And during that period of time, we have made successful soft landing and we have, let's say, like what we have done, we have gathered information through the rover module, okay? So that was a successful thing ISRO, uh, that ISRO has done. Third statement, the award is given by Exploration Museum in Husaveki, Norway. It's not Norway, basically, uh, this country that, that they have mentioned here, this particular award, it is not given by Norway. It is given by another country. Name of that country is Iceland. Okay. Iceland gives it, gives it. Iceland gives this. And recently Iceland was in news, right? And that you need to read, right? Why Iceland was in news? Because in Iceland, an active volcano has erupted, right? And before that, for over a week, there have been, let's say, seismic activity. Earthquake was also witnessed, noticed there in Iceland, okay? Where is Iceland located? Iceland is island which is located to the north of Scandinavian countries, Finland, Denmark, Sweden, etc. It is located to the west, west side of it, okay? West side of it. And to the north of it, we have another island, okay? So that is known as Greenland, okay? But here it is not Norway, it is island. Now let us see this particular question which is from UPSC previous year. This question says, for, out, uh, for outstanding contribution to which one of the following fields is Shanti Swarup Bhatnagar Award prize given? Okay, Shanti Swarup Bhatnagar Award. It is given for science. And this year, the Shanti Swarup Bhatnagar Prize was in news, right? Because the thing is, the uh, like the ministry or like UGC has decided 
to reduce the number of awards under Shanti Swarup Bhatnagar Prize, like that. Okay, so it was uh, reduced. The number of awards was reduced, so that's why it was in news. Correct answer is option C. So this is ISRO backs Icelandic prize for Chandrayaan three. Okay, so like we have done, uh, let's say, landing on the south pole of the moon. So that was a significant achievement of ISRO. Now we have another uh, question. It says reset development policy operation. Okay, reset development policy operation often mentioned in the news in relation to Sri Lanka's economic crisis is a significant instrument of which of the following organization okay so it is of world bank recent development reset development policy initiative so what is the full form of reset reset means resilience stability and economic turnaround okay reset means resilient okay reset means resilient or resilience stability and economic turnaround turn, uh, turn resilience stability and economic turn around okay resilience stability and economic turn around development policy operation okay dpo development policy operation this is the policy operation of world bank so sri lanka as we know sri lanka was facing let's say financial crisis because it's it's let's say like foreign exchange reserve has gone to critical low since foreign uh, foreign foreign exchange reserve has gone very low so the thing is they have reached approached the world bank they have approached the international monetary fund also world bank has supported let's say sri lanka and not only World Bank, International Monetary Fund has also supported Sri Lanka. They have separately supported Sri Lanka to come out of the, let's say, like, you know, balance or, or foreign exchange crisis, right? For, like, you know, low forex reserves of Sri Lanka. That's the thing. Now we have this question, which is UPSC previous year question. It says rapid financing instrument and rapid credit facility are related, related to the provision of lending by which one of the following uh, which one of the following? This is related to International Monetary Fund. So this was in news in 2022. So that's why they have asked this. Okay, this is the thing. So correct answer is in this case it is World Bank. In that case it is International Monetary Fund. So let us move to another question. Uh, so these are some of the news items that has inspired us to frame questions on that topic. Now let us take another question. This question is again important. Here we are going to discuss about it says with reference to the late blight disease we are discussing about a disease consider the following statements it is caused by the protozoa named flagellate okay it is not caused by protozoa it is caused by fungus okay it is a fungal disease it is caused by fungus i'm going to write down the name of the fungus so the first statement is wrong second it is a common it is common in humid regions with temperatures this is right the infected tubers and infected soil may serve as the source of primary infection this statement is also right okay so this question is related to late blight disease first statement is wrong second and third statement are right the name of the fungus is known as phytophthora p This is the name of the fungus that causes this problem. And this problem is happens to, let's say, potato. What? Potato. So in the tubers of the potato, basically like on the main potato, a kind of disease happens that is known as late blight disease because of which the entire cultivation of the potato gets, let's say, damaged. Okay. So potato cultivation gets damaged. So this is, this is the thing. So second and third are right. So option B is the correct answer in this case. Now let us see the previous year question. Consider the following. They have given birds, dust, dust blowing, rain, wind blowing. Which of the above is spread? Plant diseases. Okay. So plant diseases can be spread by any of them or all of them. Right. So it can be caused by all of them. This is the thing. Yes. So you have mentioned it right. So this is infestants. So let us take this question again with reference to Pradhan Mantri Bharatiya Jan Oshadhi Pariyojana. Okay. Pradhan Mantri Bharatiya Jan 
Oshadi Pariyojana. We are going to discuss this uh, question based on that. It says it aims to regulate the prices of drugs in the country. Okay. So price regulation is not done by this Jan Oshadi Pariyojana. We have drug price control order, DPCO. Okay, that's a different thing. So first the statement is wrong. Second, it says it comes under the Department of Pharmaceutics. This is right. But the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare is wrong. It's not Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. There is another ministry, which is Ministry of Chemicals. Okay, there is a ministry. It is known as Ministry of Chemicals and uh, like, you know, something like that. So it's a separate ministry altogether. It is not, uh, it is not this ministry. Okay, it is just give me a minute. Ministry of Chemicals and Fertilizers. Okay, it is Ministry of Chemicals and Fertilizers. Chemicals and Fertilizers. Third, it is one of the sub component under Pradhan Mantri Jan Arugya Yojana. This is not a sub component, it is a standalone, let's say, initiative of the government of India, Pradhan Mantri Bharatiya Jan Aushadi Pariyojana. Under this Jan Aushadi Pariyojana, the government of India tries to provide what? Medicines at lower cost to the people directly. And these medicines are generic medicines, right? These are generic medicines, that's the thing. So first, second and third all are wrong. So correct answer is option D. This is UPSC previous year question on similar topic uh, like Ayushman Bharat digital, digital Mission. This is known as ABDM. So for this question, the let's say second statement is right. As like, you know, this Ayushman Bharat Digital Mission, which is let's say, it has seamless portability across the country. This is the thing, Ayushman Bharat Digital Mission, ABDM. So with this, let us now move to another question. This is question number nine, right? We came to the second last question. Consider the following statements about Northern Winter Solstice. Okay, Northern Winter Solstice. Now let's say this is the earth. Here we have equator. Here we have Tropic of, uh, this is Tropic of Cancer, 23 and half degree. Then we have Tropic of Capricorn, 23 and half degree. This is in South, this is in North. So now we are talking about winter solstice in north right winter solstice so winter solstice in north will come when the sun will rise in the south right when it uh, rises in south so in north we will be having the shortest day we will be having the longest night in winter solstice it says shortest night and so it is shortest day longest night and it falls during the second half of the month of december this is also right this is this happens generally on 21st of December, okay. Today is, I think, 22nd of December. Yesterday, we have had northern winter solstice. So, first statement is right. How many of them are correct? Only one, okay. Then, this is, it says, in the northern hemisphere, the longest day of the year normally occurs in the, now they are talking about longest day, right. It was shortest day, longest day will be happening, second half of the month of June, okay. This is, Let's say it, it happens in the second half of the month of June. Now with this, let us now move to another topic, question number 10. This is going to be the last topic. It says consider the following statements about Operation Prosperity Guardian. Okay, Operation Prosperity Guardian. It says it is a multinational security initiative led by USA. It aims to maintain, right, it aims to maintain security of commerce, uh, commercial ships in the Mediterranean Sea, okay. So the first statement is right, it is a multinational security initiative led by USA, but they have mentioned about Mediterranean Sea over here, which is wrong. Why it is wrong? Because this is not related to Mediterranean Sea, this is related to Red Sea. Recently what has happened, we discussed in the Hindu newspaper analysis also, in Red Sea, the ships that were being, uh, that were passing, so they were being attacked by Houthi rebels. And Houthi rebels are the people who are from Yemen, okay. So they wanted to protect the country from Houthi rebels, so that's why. So first statement is correct, right. Option A is the right answer and this is a similar topic, similar topic, uh, let's say like, you know, from UPSC, two statements are given. So it is related to Australia group and Wassenaar arrangement. 
right? So we discussed about it earlier in Hindu analysis. You can read yourself, right? So this is, let's say, UPSC counterpart question. It was asked in 2011. So that will be all from my side. I have discussed all the 10 questions. So attacks on ships, I discussed, right? On Red Sea, we have done mapping of the Red Sea also. Strait of Babel, Babel Mandev, we have done mapping of this also. So that is all from my side for the day. Thank you so much everyone for attending today's session. I hope you have a good day ahead. Thank you.